こんにちは。你好，你好。嗨，你好。啊，<笑>好久不见。好久不见，こんにちは。こんにちは。今日はよろしくお願いします。こちらこそよろしくお願いします。<笑>では、館内あの動線あっても動線の対策であれば。Recording in progress. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the afternoon session of the International Online Conference on Smart Healthcare Technology and Patient Safety. We would like to remind you to sign in for the afternoon session. The first presentation will be given by Dr. Shin Uchiro. Professor and Director of Division of Patient Safety, QC University Hospital. We are very honored to have the Dr. Ming Yi Zhang Liao, founder of Taiwan Patient Safety Cultural Club, that to chair this session. Yes, welcome, Dr. Zhang Liao. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, hope you all had a nice. Lunch break. This is Dr. Chen Liao again from Taiwan Patient Safety Cultural Club. I would like to open the session and call the meeting to order. Our next invited speaker from abroad is Dr. Shin Ushiro. He is a personal friend of mine, and is better known 
by many of our members as Taiwan's friends. In Chinese, we say Taiwan zi yong. Welcome. He loves Taiwan so much and he loves Taiwan food and has done a lot for Taiwan in one way or the other. For those who are not very acquainted with him, I would just give a brief introduction. He graduated from Kyushu University School of Medicine and became professor when uh, 2014, yeah. When he was the professor since 2014. He was trained as a general surgeon, but now he devotes most of his time for patient safety. That's great. He has been working for JQ, previously known as Japan Council for Quality Healthcare since around 2005, and is now an executive board member. He has been the key person for data collection of the National Adverse Events Reporting System and in charge, uh, in charge of a prevention project. He is an expert on no fault compensation system for cerebral palsy in Japan. He also has been member of ISQA board of board since 2017. So he's well respected, prominent patient safety activist, innovator, and educator at the regional, national, and international levels. In his role as advisor to the Minister of Health of Japan, he has made significant and sustained contribution in recent years. Now I would like to call on him to deliver his uh, lecture. The title of his talk is Patient Safety and Candid Attitude to Patient and Family Through Electronic Incident Reporting System. Professor Ushiro, please. Hello everyone, Zaja Hao. I am Shin Shiro of Kyushu University Hospital, Japan Council for Quality Healthcare, the Minister of Health, Labor and Welfare of Japan, where I work as an advisor to the minister. And I also work for ISQA, International Society for Quality Healthcare. Let me begin with my talk by congratulating you in Changhua Christian Hospital for observing 125th anniversary. I'm really honored and privileged to be a part of this valued conference. So um, I'd like to highlight in my talk, uh, patient safety and candid attitude to patient and family through electronic incident reporting system in my country. So let's get started. Shinzai Kaishiba. Okay, let me briefly describe my workplace, which is Kyushu University Hospital. Kyushu University Hospital is located in, in the city of Fukuoka with a history transcending 100 years, like uh, your hospital. And we have uh, more than 3,000 3, staff members. And the number of beds exceeds 1,400. Kyushu University Hospital is one of the oldest national university hospital in my country. Well, I also work in a Japan Council for Quality Healthcare as a dual assignment, which is built in uh, 1995 to initiate hospital accreditation in my country. JQ is funded by Japan Medical Association and the central government and the other uh, organizations related to healthcare. In addition, and obviously, JQ is one of the one of the organizational members of ISCRA, International Society for Quality Healthcare, as well as Taiwan Joint Commission. Here, I listed the, the JQ's projects on quality and safety improvement. Um, here, you see a hospital accreditation, and obviously, we have to different reporting and learning system of medical institution and community pharmacies. And uh, we also have an um, uh, obstetric compensation investigation and prevention system for brain damaged baby called the cerebral palsy. And please no uh, note that patient representatives participate in most of the projects. 
for co-creation. In the year 2002, the Japanese government issued a national policy on patient safety called the Holistic Policy on Patient Safety, uh, including four pillars such as roles of healthcare providers, role of governments, role of manufacturers, and role of citizens. It clearly mentioned to the significance and the necessity of in-house reporting system and the national reporting and learning system. Well, um, the Ministry of Health revised the, the Health Care Act to include a chapter on patient safety and uh, also revised the ministerial ordinance to enforce medical institutions to introduce improvement measures aimed at ensuring patient safety, such as reporting medical incidents that occur in medical institutions. So now you see uh, there are um, reporting and learning systems at the two different, different levels, such as institutional level and the national level, operated by JQ. I have been working, uh, uh, working on both of the systems. So having observed the successful uh, operation of the very first reporting and learning system, a similar system proliferated in my country, and I have been working on the first three uh, reporting and learning system operated by JQ, and the, la the last one, uh, in other words, the latest one, is the investigation system of accidental death, operated by a different organization called Japan Patient Safety Research Organization. Okay, let me uh, briefly describe uh, the outline of our reporting and learning system, system, which is the original one. And we receive adverse event and the near miss event through web-based reporting, uh, reporting system. And we occasionally make on-site visit to medical institutions to collect further information. And uh, this system is operated uh, by steering committee and expert panel. A steering committee includes patient representative for co-creation. Our products are listed here, annual and quarterly report, monthly alert database, and we also provide a training program in which participants learn root cause analysis. Our products are totally um, open to the public on our website on condition of anonymity. Well, having learned that the original reporting and learning system worked very well in my country, um, in uh, the JQ and the Ministry of Health launched equivalent system for medication safety in community pharmacy in 2008. Most of, of the element and their, uh, their functions are identical to the one uh, uh, which is shown uh, in previous slide. Well, this is sort of a, a reporting and learning system for brain damaged baby called the cerebral palsy, uh, which was launched in 2009. Uh, we provide no photo compensation, monetary compensation, regardless, uh, paid regardless of negligence. And we also provide investigation and prevention with patient representatives for, for co-creation. Specifically, we, we publish and uh, deliver investigative report, not only to medical institutions but also to families so that they family will know what ha uh, what happened during the labor that eventually caused the cerebral palsy and uh, through through the AIDS activity we aim at prevention early settlement of conflicts and improvement of quality well, this slide illustrates the trajectory of lawsuit case related to obstetrics and gynecology. We have observed rapid decline in the number of lawsuit cases. Um, I told you that uh, this system provide um, investigative report to patient and families. So um, uh, I would say that this system is candid uh, to uh, patient and family. So I, we learned that uh, it is important for us medical professionals to take candid action to patient and family. Well, through the operation of this system over the last 10 years, um, uh, this system has been touted by stakeholders. So we are allowed to expand the system uh, from, the, uh, from the year 2022. Well, okay, I'm going to describe details of reporting and learning system of medical institution. Well, uh, what 
uh, this slide displays is the number of institutions by reporting type. So medical institutions which report adverse event on monthly basis are 274 in number, on voluntary basis 820. Um, uh, together with those two, uh, we have uh, 1,094 medical institutions which reports adverse event. And to come to think of near miss events, there are 1,256 uh, medical institutions. And um, removing the, the figure of institutions overlapping with, uh, among two groups, uh, we, have, um, we have medical institutions as many as 1,531 in our uh, reporting and learning system, which accounts for 17 to 18% of Japanese, um, Japanese hospitals. Please note that we have more than 8,000 hospitals in my country. Well, one of the population of hospitals which is subject to reporting is university hospital. Uh, well, this is a group photo of Japan National University Hospital Alliance on Patient Safety called JANUHA. Uh, I am working in university hospital, so I am a member of this uh, hospital group, and I am a committee chair of Committee on Public Affairs and Scientific Research. This is, a, uh, this is an occasion in which we uh, observed the, the very first WHO World Patient Safety Day in 2019. As seen here, we very, uh, very often work together uh, in concerted manner uh, to promote patient safety in my country. This slide shows the trajectory of the adverse event reporting to JQ, and we are happy uh, to, to demonstrate to you that um, uh, we observed a steady rise in the number of um, our report, our adverse event reporting to JQ. Well, so you may want to know why we were successful uh, in growing the number of um, reporting cases of adverse event. Uh, here I listed the prob probable reasons for the safety rise, uh, steady rise in external reporting. Number one, strict adherence to no blame and anonymity in operation by JQ. And number two, repeated call for registration through a series of lectures that I made across Japan. And I delivered 20 to 30 lectures annually at the, at the height of my activity. Number three, feedback to medical professionals with helpful products, IT, monthly alert reports, and database, and pressure on medical institutions for registration by media and the patient, family, and lawyer. And guidance instruction by the local government through annual inspection and regular inspection. And I enhance the transparency by providing data for practical and research use to, to the healthcare front and research institution, etc. So our product is very, very helpful and touted by uh, those professionals and researchers. Well, here I show you the contents of annual report and the quarterly report. We, it encompasses outline of the system, numerical analysis, and thematic analysis, such as we have produced new uh, uh, analysis on new themes, as many as 229 so far. And we also uh, ha have uh, uh, analysis on recurrent themes, as many as 180. Uh, we have published six four quarterly reports and 16 annual reports so far. Well, uh, this is one of the numerical analysis uh, labeled as types of adverse event. You see, uh, the nursing care is most common, uh, followed by procedures, which includes um, surgery and other invasive procedures, which uh, deserves to learn very much. Now you see the list of recent themes such as wrong pickup of a syringe filled with transparent therapy, therapeutic solution and uh, the event related to pathological test and accidental ingestion by patient uh, of PTP pressed through package of tablet and capsule and so on. Well, PDF of those analysis are posted on our website with different color for classification.
At this point, I'd like to pick up one of the themes which have been has been very much highlighted in my country over the over the couple of years. The theme is inadequate checks concerning the diagnostic imaging report. In other words, failure to confirm CT or MRI imaging report that suggest suggested of cancer. So I will show you the case reported to our reporting online system on this issue. What happened was that patient diagnosed with abdominal aortic aneurysm underwent CT scanning for follow up, for following up the possible growth of it. Vascular physician recorded the finding of the CT image on medical chart on his own. One year later, a nephrologist, another physician in charge of the patient, learned from another hospital that the patient developed lung cancer. Reviewing the CT imaging report issued by radiologists one year ago, it described as there is a lesion highly suspicious of lung cancer, but vascular surgeon one year ago um, ignored it. So Japanese media highlighted this issue again and again. Uh, what do you see here is the, one of the big media report, which reads the physician in charge ignored cancer in organs that he or she didn't specialize in. City imaging reports mentioned to cancer. Nine similar cases, including two fatal cases, were verified through internal investigation of this uh, university hospital, which is very prestigious um, uh, Chiba University Hospital. Preventive measures should be in place in expedited manner. This is the story of this uh, media report. Well, as the case uh, which took place in University Hospital was very much highlighted, uh, so Janha uh, uh, took a swift action to carry out fact-finding survey such as questionnaire survey and on-site survey program in 2017, and uh, we are going to do this uh, do on-site survey again this year to see if the preventive measure is um, uh, continuously implemented. Well, in the questionnaire survey in 2017, uh, one of the questions was, is physician reminded of the new issuance of imaging report when it is produced by radiologist? And uh, it turned out that only 58% uh, institutions are installed with no notification system on uh, issuance of the imaging report on ele electronic, electronic health record. Uh, so physicians need to keep the city taken in mind, not to fail to refer to the report. This could cause an error, obviously. So the notification system rapidly spread in the alliance in our group during 2018 to 2020. Well, uh, to be very honest with you, in relation to the themes of this conference, uh, we experienced painful court ruling uh, in 2019. The event took place in 2006. What happened was that physician in my university hospital overlooked a finding in CT imaging report that suspicious of brain tumor in the report. So uh, in 2019, the district court in Fukuoka sentenced my university hospital to be charged of 150 million Japanese yen, corresponding to 1.4 million US dollar, which is a huge damage payment. Well, in light of this, uh, the stunning court ruling shown previously in the slide, uh, I strongly suggested uh, hospital director that uh, we should have, we should equip a vigilance module on this issue in our electronic health record. Um, this uh, module is available by any staff and at any time. And he, uh, if you open the, uh, open the module, uh, here you see uh, two group of patients. The first group has, uh, has imaging report, which is not confirmed 
this is a problem. Another group uh, has a, uh, has a reports which is confirmed. Okay, uh, and also um, you see uh, you see the type of modules: CT, MRI, and X-ray, and issue issue the date of the re imaging report. And uh, here you see patient's ID, name, and uh, outpatient or inpatient, and clinical division under which patient is given a care, and data of order of imaging report. Uh, so um, you can uh, you can browse many data on this uh, on the imaging report. Uh, if it turns out that you have a patient with uh, with uh, imaging report not confirmed, uh, what you need to do is to come to the actual imaging report shown here. I'm sorry that most of the data is protected for uh, personal protection, and. Um, uh, and uh, what you need to do is to confirm this report in the beginning, and then you change the status of the report from not confirmed to confirmed. To, uh, there is a button uh, to change the status in this module. Well, in tandem with uh, installing sophisticated vigilance module, and I believe that we need to change our mindset and procedures to respond to disputable events. So once uh, those cases are identified through incident reporting uh, system, uh, I have encouraged our staff uh, to respond to those cases with the principles of three don'ts, such as do not conceal, do not keep away, and do not deceive. The three don'ts rule is a subject to learn in orientation calls uh, for fresh staff members at the beginning of a uh, new fiscal year. What is shown on your right is the slide for new staff. We may have favored three do's, i.e. conceal, we may want to keep away, we may, we may want to deceive instead of three don'ts. However, it is not nowadays accept, acceptable in my country. Okay, once uh, disputable events is identified through our incident reporting system, uh, we swiftly move to uh, step one to four. Uh, during step one to two, um, we explore the, explore the nature of this event from clinical viewpoint to see if the case is negligent or not. And in step Three, uh, we communicated with, with patient and family in very candid way, in very honest way. And in step four, if, we, if necessary, we pay the damaged payment um, uh, by uh, indemnity insurance uh, for settling the case out of court. And what is important is that points of contention have to be clear in written uh, paper prior to the committee. Uh, the written document of scenario uh, of the committee, including the contentious points, is produced by my division, which is Division of Patient Safety, safety in advance of the meeting. And uh, the document intends to break hesitation uh, and reluctance uh, by, uh, by participants in the meeting during the discussion. Well, through the years of effort to promote uh, candid action, candid response to disputable event in my con in my hospital, I happened to learn that similar activity has been uh, implemented in the United States, uh, promoted by the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality in the Department of Health and a Patient Safety Movement Foundation, which is a private foundation. Uh, Dr. Chan Liao Ming, uh, one of the one of the uh, moderator in this conference, is ASEAN focal focal point of. Uh, Patient Safety Movement Foundation. The activity in the United States is called CANDLE, which, uh, is, which means communication and optimal resolution. Okay, let me come back to our products, which is monthly alert. It includes logo, title, and key statement in different color. And what is unique about this in, uh, monthly alert is to include illustration to facilitate a better and in instant understanding of the statement. And on page two, we included uh, a couple of case presentations. And to the last but not the least, we include preventive or pre improvement measures reported by medical institutions. And occasionally, we uh, may include comments from our expert panel. Well, the monthly alert is delivered to uh, Japanese medical institutions through a couple of channels, such as fax, 
and the notice by central and local authorities and the website. Uh, now uh, it is delivered to nearly 6,000 uh, Japanese medical institutions accounting for 70% of Japanese hospitals. We produce an uh, English version of our monthly alert to be, uh, to be distributed globally through the project called Global Patient Safety Alerts uh, operated by Healthcare Excellence Canada. Uh, you can find a video clip to describe this project on YouTube. If you go to the, this, uh, the video clip, uh, uh, you will first see the um, famous phrase, famous uh, statement by Salia Donaldson, WHO Patient Safety Envoy, which reads, to urge human to cover up is unforgivable and to fail to learn is inexcusable. Inex Next, you will see the image of a cooperation between Japan and the United States uh, to exchange knowledge and expertise through uh, our uh, monthly alert. And lastly, but not the least, uh, you will know that uh, there is an app uh, on this project uh, which works on your smartphone and the tablet uh, device. Well, the next product I'd like to tell you about is the database of adverse event and the NIAMI spent on homepage. And um, uh, uh, you can choose adverse event or near miss event or both, and you can type keyword of your interest, such as dialysis, and you will see 706 cases are matched. And you can browse individual cases one after another by clicking the button shown here, and you can download the case of your interest in, onto your computer uh, in three different formats, such as XML, PDF, and the CSV. If you download the case in CSV format, it could be opened through Microsoft Excel, shown here. And each line, each individual line indicates individual case, including coding data and the text data as well. Um, we have included uh, nearly 100,000 cases of adverse event and near miss event so far in our database. You know, with the data stored in our database, a research project uh, to apply artificial in intelligence uh, for analysis of incident report is now underway uh, in my country, funded by the Japanese government. Researchers are from Hong Kong, um, uh, Australia, China, and Japan, and other countries. So please know that I am not a specialist for artificial intelligence, but um, researchers in this research group is now trying to uh, figure out uh, figure out uh, what is the probable cause of incident, individual incident and uh, explore the link possible linkage between certain type of drug and the site a certain type of side effect uh, through uh, named entity recognition and the deep learning structures. So in order to do that, what we need to have is um, pre-trained text, pre-trained text. So now we are uh, we have uh, we are producing um, uh, hundreds of pre-trained pre text. Well, here you see one of the case, and uh, here I'm going to show you how we produce uh, pre-trained text by uh, by labeling each word with meaning, which is called uh, the process of annotation among among experts on uh, artificial intelligence. Well, what you see here is one of the pre-trained text. We label, we annotate each word in such a way that physician means people involved, two milliliter means strength related, 20 milliliter also means strength related, increment syrup means right to dark as well, uh, uh, et cetera. But uh, you may want to uh, distinguish two milliliter from 20 milliliter because you intended the two milliliter and the 20 milliliter was wrong dose. So um, uh, you can label, you can annotate two milliliter as intended together with strength related. And uh, you, uh, you, want to, uh, you may want to annotate 20 milliliter as the fact or result together with strength related. This is called um, uh, inten intention and factuality annotation. Well, with the help of a uh, private company shown here, we have successfully developed 300 annotated 
JQ medication incident reports, incident report corpus with the intention and factuality annotation. Our database is favored not only by researchers, but also pharmaceutical industries and medical device industries. For instance, pharmaceutical companies have produced um, uh, have produced, produced uh, alerting materials uh, to warn of sound alike drugs, such as Cydase and Serenase, Ropafine and Lucifi, Graceptor and Prograph, and so on. I think it is very important uh, that uh, different companies. Uh, some of them are rivals, each other, uh, jointly produced uh, alerting materials like this for promoting patient safety in my country. Well, what happened next with our database in 2012 was that Alma and Amari was a notorious combination of sound alike drugs in my country. So, and Alma, the brand name was relinquished and uh, or removed from the market on voluntary basis by the by pharmaceutical company for patient safety reason. Along with the advancement in technology, we opened a Facebook account to distribute our products. We have held uh, many press conferences so far for disclosure, publicity, and transparency whenever we, pr we produced uh, our products. And some of the press conferences were aired uh, by TV news and, uh, uh, and reported in, in some media. So in closing, there are some takeaways. Number one, Japan underwent a desperate medical accident in late 1990s, which highlighted installing reporting and learning system on institutional and national levels. Number two, JQ launched the national system in 2004 and have successfully operated it with production of reports, alerts, database, and so on. The products of the system have been widely utilized for practical and research use. Number three, equivalent systems were built step by step, such as systems for community pharmacy and perinatal medicine. No photocompensation investigation prevention system for brain damaged baby called cerebral palsy is so unique that deserves distribution on global basis. To be honest with you, uh, Malaysian government and the medical professionals are now conducting introductory work on similar, uh, on similar systems in the healthcare system. Uh, number four, key elements of the success are no blame culture, anonymity principle, pressure by media, transparency, accountability, awareness of global trend, and so on. This is Nita Linting. Thanks for listening. I'm happy to take questions. Great. Dr. Ushiro speaks very perfect Chinese. Now we'd like to take questions. We probably have, yeah, we have enough time for a few questions, maybe. Yes. Anyone? Okay, let, let me ask you a question. Uh, like sure. you, you will make a comment on the uh, two PowerPoints that you showed about uh, uh, imaging, probably the the uh, the missed the cancer. Yes, yes. In uh, your hospital and also in Chiba University. Yes. Because you the the court ruled that you both have to pay a mm. very big amount of uh, compensation. Exactly. So, yeah, I would like you to make comment about uh, who is culpable. Mm -hmm. the, the doctors, which doctor, for example, maybe the ordering physician mm -hmm. or the radiologist, radiologist, because to me it looks maybe like it's a radiology malpractice. So what is the role of the radiologist? Are they culpable? They're responsible for this compensation? Because in the United States, maybe, yes. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your comment. And uh, in my country, and uh, as you all know, that radiologists uh, write down all the findings they identified, regardless of the, of the degree. I, I mean, the 
uh, uh, small disease and big disease, they all uh, write down in uh, CT or MRI imaging report. But uh, if, if the finding is very urgent, it's, if it is emergency, they call doctor by phone. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, uh, if, uh, even if it is small cancer, uh, we have time uh, before uh, surgery. So the uh, radiologists do not call doctors. They just uh, publish CT and the imaging report. And the radiologists believe that uh, physicians will read all the, all the parts of the document. Uh, and a uh, physician will know about the, um, uh, about the unprecedented findings identified by radiologists. But, uh, uh, but uh, through the ex uh, experience of uh, those, uh, those events, which, uh, which was aired and publicized by big media, um, radiologists changed their mind and the, they established a policy uh, to call doctor uh, as, you, uh, as they did. And they also um, call doctor uh, even if they find small findings. And okay, uh, 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 those who working in patient safety department like me uh, also check the CT and the uh, MRI imaging report. So I am in charge of um, uh, confirming uh, the C uh, imaging report, which is not confirmed by physician. So uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, as long as one year and a half, I confirmed the 9,000 CT and MRI imaging report in non-confirmed status. So, and I found, well, um, well, uh, dozens of cases uh, which, which contains unprecedented findings. Uh, not all of them are cancer. Uh, may, uh, almost, almost all the cases are uh, now under observation, uh, not urgent uh, findings. But uh, what we are doing uh, to respond to uh, this type of event in my country is uh, what I described right now. Thank you. Yeah. My curiosity is just to know who should pay for compensation. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. hospital pays for it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Great. Great question. Actually, uh, in my country, um, it is very rare uh, that uh, physician uh, physician pay compensation uh, to patient on their own, and uh, usually, or uh, in all uh, in all the cases. Hospital and the physician, both of them have uh, insurance, indemnity, indemnity insurance, and uh, usually a hospital pay a damage payment to patient and families. So um, uh, I don't see any cases in which uh, individual physician uh, had to pay a damage payment. I see. Mm. Uh, I thought maybe in the in the United States the. Mm doctor who order the mm -hmm. CT mm -hmm. imaging mm -hmm. has to pay part mm -hmm. and also the uh, radiologist should pay half, I mean maybe half or part but we all know that patient himself maybe also has responsibility mm -hmm. so maybe uh, well that's that, that's good to know yes mm -hmm. thank you anyone um, like would like to ask questions? In Taiwan, uh, doctor has to pay damage oh, yes. to the patient. Really? Okay. Very likely. Yeah. Very, very likely, really. Mm -hmm. So we don't like to put a uh, big responsibility to uh, onto uh, physician, uh, individual physician, individual nurses. So I believe that uh, the organization needs to take responsibility for cases like that. Okay, the time is up. Is there, is there any other question? Any comments? No comments. Okay, we are just right on time. Okay. Thank you very much again. You're welcome. Uh, okay, see you. See you in Taiwan uh, next see time. See you in Taiwan. Yeah. yeah. Thank Maybe you very much. Also again in October. In October, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. In another conference. Okay.
可以，谢谢大家 ，Thank you， 谢谢，拜拜啊，再见，再见，拜拜。我们谢谢后信博士和詹廖明义总顾问。Thank you very much. We are proceeding to the second session in the afternoon. We are very honored to have Dr. Pong Pong from Wildlife Lab University. Uh, he will talk about augmented reality in healthcare. We are very honored to have Dr. Nina Gao. CEO of Overseas Medical Mission Center, Donghua Christian Hospital, to chair this session. Let's welcome Dr. Gao. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Yeah, in this session, it's our great pleasure to invite Professor Pong Pong from the Wallalek University of Thailand to share his, his experience. Professor Pong Pong is an associate professor and the dean of the School of Informatics at Wallalek University in Thailand. He receives his um, doctor degree in uh, physics at Kent State University in Ohio, Uni United States. And in year 1919, he joined Wallalek University as the head of computer center. Later on, he was promoted to be vice president and dean of the School of Informatics. So his research in the latest 10 years emphasized on augmented reality, AR, he is also the leader of all I like University Hospital Information Systems. So today he is going to share the augmented reality in healthcare. Professor Pombon, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Poon Pong Boon Pram from Wallalak University, Thailand. It is my pleasure to have an opportunity to present our work at this international conference on smart healthcare organized by Shenghua Christian Hospital. The topic of my talk today will cover from what is the augmented reality, the augmented reality application and uh, application in healthcare. And then I will cover the research uh, in healthcare at Wallach University using this reality and then I finish it with the uh, trend in using augmented reality in healthcare in the future. To start with, what is the augmented reality? I think this picture can tell you that uh, when people look at this one, they know that it's Pokemon Go. Okay, in 2016, the mobile game called Pokemon Go sent uh, a lot of people, millions of people, you know, uh, into the street searching for the virtual, virtual monster. In the process, it helped popularize the augmented reality technology, which overlay the computer generated object in the real world environment. So augmented reality can be defined as the technology that superimposes the computer-generated object on the user view of the real world. Okay. As you can see in this picture, where the virtual object of the mango seed, which is the local fruit from the southern part of Thailand, can be seen in the real world, walking along the people in the street. This project is the tool uh, for promoting gastronomy tourism in the Konsi Tamarat. Okay. The thing that uh, people always get confused is that uh, what is the augmented reality and what is the virtual reality. Okay. To make it easy to understand, you can see from these two pictures. The in augmented reality, we can experience the virtual object while still in the real world environment, just like we see in the left hand side. Okay. And this one, the virtual uh, object is the text that display. Okay. But in the virtual reality, we totally immerse into the virtual environment. So this is the difference between the two. 
as you can see the detail here. Next, I'm going to tell you about only the augmented reality because we are concentrating on the augment, uh, augmented reality. And there are two types of uh, augmented reality. Okay. The first one is the market, market based augmented reality. You can call it AR. Okay. Market based AR use the uh, decided marker, such as the picture. Uh, the QR code or the logo to activate the experience. Then the virtual object can be displayed at the location specified by the information provided on the marker. Okay, like it's on top of the marker, it's on the left hand side, right hand side, or something like that. But for the markerless of reality, the system scan the real environment and place the digital element on their recognizable feature, such as the flat surface or the uh, specific location provided by the GPS. Okay. So instead of being tied to the marker, the markerless AR, the digital elements are placed based on the geography. In our work, we are using only the Marker based AR. So I will concentrate only on the marker based AR. Okay. The marker based AR work by using the mobile camera, scanning a marker which trigger an augmented experience, whether it's the object, uh, virtual object, or the text, or the video, or the animation. This object will appear on the device, so you can see it uh, on top of the marker. Okay. It usually requires the software in an application which enable user to scan the marker uh, from the uh, device using the camera that uh, fit the, the picture into the system. Okay, as you can see in the diagram. There are many devices that can be used for the AI application, ranging from the very cost, costly one like a Google Glass or the HoloLens, or new intelligent class like the Oculari Smart Glass. But it can be uh, used by the tablet or the smartphone as well. But in our system, uh, in our development, we are concentrating on using the tablet or smartphone is much cheaper because uh, the device like uh, HoloLens, Microsoft HoloLens, it will cost around three to 4,000 US dollar. But in Thailand, it will cost about 6,000 US dollar, which is quite expensive comparing to the tablet or the smartphone, which costs only a few hundred uh, US dollar. Next, we are going to talk about the application of the AR or augmented reality. There are so many applications available right now, uh, covering from the industrial and manufacturing, uh, education, military, engineering, retail, marketing, and advertising, and of course, healthcare. Okay. But uh, in this talk, I'm going to concentrate only on the application in the healthcare area. Okay. Since, augmented, since the augmented reality or AI is not limited to the gaming arena only, so the technology is creating the, the big wave in healthcare. Okay. AI in healthcare has created the future of limit, limitless possibility. There are so many areas in healthcare that uh, augmented reality can be applied to, but I will concentrate or emphasize on only three areas, uh, such as the healthcare operation, uh, diagnostic, and training. The 
first one, uh, the augmented reality in uh, supporting the, the surgery. The doctor can use the a new augmented reality technology to superimpose the image or the model from the medical scan, such as MRI or CT scan, on the patient body, especially on the specific area of interest or surgical site, as you can see in the picture. Okay. In this uh, picture, the surgeon can view the medical scan display above the patient's surgical site, uh, making it easy for the surgeon to operate on the patient with uh, high efficiency. This is the, the work that uh, has been done at John Hopkins Hospital. The second area that I would like to mention is uh, in diagnosis. Okay. The application allowed putting together and visualizing all the patient information such as the symptom or result from uh, medical diagnosis. So it reduced the risk uh, of mistake and also improved and simplify sharing this information with the colleagues or the patient. Okay. For example, on the left-hand side, you can see that the augmented reality technology can display a map of the vein on the skin surface so that the nurse or the medical doctor can identify exact location of the vein, but vein, okay. In another example, the dentist can visualize the patient's teeth before the treatment, and after placing the simulated version on the patient's teeth, so the patient can see what it looked like after the treatment. Okay. In the third area is for practice or for training. Okay. Since medical personnel cannot make any mistake, especially in their life uh, procedure, so proper training must be done. And AR can be used for this purpose. Okay. Today, many uh, medical university or institutions are beginning to implement AR into their curriculum to provide the student with valuable hand-on learning experience. Okay. The technology can allow the medical student to visualize and practice theory during their training. With the AI application, students can check out the overlay anatomy data on the 3D human skeleton. The visualization would help them understand better how the human body works. Besides that, the augmented reality technology can be used in medical consult consulting as well, where the medical student can get some advice from the supervisor on the specific issue. So both of them can see the same thing and discuss about the same uh, topic, the same specific point. This can be done either by both students and the supervisor are in the same place, or they can be in different location, but uh, in the same network. So it will be very helpful in study the uh, many things in the medical area. Now I'm coming to the work at the Wallach University. As you can see in this uh, picture, the medical student can study human anatomy with the system that we have developed. Okay, here at our university. And uh, the system that we develop here can be used with the tablet or the mobile camera, mobile phone. So it's much cheaper than uh, using the device like HoloLens, as I have mentioned before. Okay. So with the cheap device, but uh, the application can show the same thing 
So every medical student can experience the AI application for their learning here at Wallerak University. Besides that, our system can also be used as a collaborative system as well, where the two or more people can study the same specimens simultaneously, uh, even though they are in the different place. So it will be very useful for collaboration work. This is another example of how we use the augmented theory to study the human anatomy, where the medical student can use their own hand to study uh, the anatomy. Okay. As you can see that they can study the, the muscle, the blood vein, or the skeleton, and they can check whether what part of this uh, skeleton, how do to call it or something like that. So it will be really useful. They can do it any anytime, anywhere they want. This is another work that we develop uh, at Polalak University to train the nursing student to sense the patient uh, pulse, vital pulse. With the augmented reality, the student can visualize the blood vein so that they uh, can measure the vital pulse correctly. Okay. Besides that, by using the haptic device, the application can generate different vital virtual pulse, so the student can differentiate the normal pulse and the abnormal pulse to screen some patient with specific disease. So this is a very useful uh, for training the nursing student to identify uh, the, the patient. This is another example that uh, how we use the augmented reality beyond visualizing the virtual object. Okay. This can be seen from the example that we use augmented reality for CPR training. Since there should be some indicator that to tell that uh, the to tell the, the trainee that the, the activity for CPR training is effective. For example, the rate of uh, suitable compression should be around 100 to 120 compression per minute, which is very hard to, to count okay, and to uh, notice. Another thing is that the depth from the press uh, on the chest could be approximately uh, six centimeters, which is quite difficult for the beginner to guess as well. So we developed the application that used the AR to assist this uh, CPR training. Okay. As you can see from the picture on the left-hand side, Okay. We use the marker lying on the floor that you can see just like a picture of the rock or something. Okay. When the camera capture the, the, the marker, okay, it will display the model of the human. Okay. And we can control that the model will be placed exactly on top of the pillow, okay? With the chest exactly at the, at the pillow, okay? And if the pillow has some density close to the human body, uh, then it will be very, very good for, for the experiment, okay? Another thing is that when we start activating the program, okay? If you show the base place for the CPR operation, as you can see in the, the red uh, over there, okay. So for the beginner, they can know where to press their hand for the CPR. Okay. After we get the first one, then we put another marker, the second marker 
you can put it on the hand or on the glove or you know on top of their hand then the, the two marker will be calculated okay the beauty of the 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 marker base is that the two marker can be interact okay like the first marker lying on the ground the second marker is on the hand so they can calculate so we can calculate the, the distance between the two marker so when we press our hand on the on the virtual body or on the pillow okay then it will calculate how deep we press it on if it's uh, about five centimeter or six centimeter we can see that the green circle coming up on the top right okay so we know that we press at the right uh, depth okay after that you know we can the, the system will calculate how many times that we press in one minute and then we will show that uh, on the, the last picture that in one minute, you know, the status of the display for the compression will be shown. Like uh, this one, you can see that in 60 seconds or one minute, the compression time, the compression is about 106 time, which is quite okay for, for CPR training. Okay. And this is the last project that uh, under developing at the, our university. We can uh, we try to use the marker base AR to map the virtual brain model into the exact location of the patient head. Okay. Uh, the virtual brain later on can be you know, the, the model from the uh, CT scan or MRI. This can help both the medical in the in the medical training and also in the surgical operation because uh, after we put the, the the virtual brain into the exact position even though the patient moves their head the brain will move along with the, the the head as well okay so this is the research work that we have done here at Valerak University related to uh, the application of augmented reality in healthcare. Okay. The last part of is the future trend. Okay. With the advance in technology, especially in the infrastructure uh, and the device, many applications can be done. For example, the remote training, remote collaboration can be done easily. Okay. Also, with a new powerful device, which of course will be less expensive, okay. more application will be developed, and more people will have an opportunity to use the system. Okay. Example of the new function that uh, available right now is that uh, temperature reading, like in the Logit class, smart class, uh, it can tell the temperature of the people, you know, a few feet away. So this is a very good uh, one for uh, tracing the COVID-19 uh, person, uh, the person who already got the, the disease. Okay. And later on, there will be another function available that will help uh, in the uh, the patient uh, another function that will be very useful in healthcare. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, if you have any question, you can contact me at this address. Okay. And thanks again for Zhonghua uh, uh, Hospital for invitation me to talk in this uh, session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Pom Hong. So um, the doc, Dr. Pom Hong's presentation is very interesting, particularly for the parts use the AR.
to train the students on CPR. This is a very cool. <laughs> so um, I don't know if any question from our audience online. If no question, I would like to one, ask one question for our speaker. Because I visited uh, Wairaki University before, and I also know Wairaki University Hospital is a new hospital, and also the medical educational hospital. And Dr. Pompong lead, lead his IC, IT team to respond to the hospital's information system. So I also know um, Dr. Pompong dedicated to facilitate Wairaki University Hospital to be an intelligent hospital in the future. So my question is, in the future, Will what I like university hospital will apply the AR on the real health care. And do you think what what kind of the risk or any risk or challenges will be fast and how to overcome them? Pong Pong, Dr. Pong, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Nina. I'm glad to see you again. It's been a while since <laughs> we, we have a chance to, to talk together. Okay. Um, about the, the question, very interesting question. Since uh, dealing with uh, the person, you know, it's a quite uh, complicated uh, situation. So at right now we are working on uh, using AR just to for education, like for training the, 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 the nursing student or the medical student so they can, you know, uh, learn anatomy better and you know practice some some work uh, related to, to to the human body. Okay, but uh, later on, I think we we plan to use it uh, in in real life as well. You know, especially in diagnostic. The uh, question is very interesting because uh, in using AR is a uh, it's just like a non-destructive uh, testing or diagnosing. So we don't do any damage to the body. So I think the, the, the risk is very really low. Okay. For example, using AR, we can uh, locate the area where the, uh, there is some cancer uh, over there. You know. So the risk is that we can, maybe we can uh, mislocate it the, the, the location a little bit, but it's better than, you know, just guessing where is it. So I, I think that's, uh, that's the risk that, that we can see. But in the future, if we can have a new uh, advanced uh, device or more experience in, in doing some research, we can, we can use AR to, to locate it, the the, the, the area that we, we do like to, to work on uh, accurately. And I think, uh, as I have mentioned something about the application, you know, uh, augmented reality, especially in, in uh, marker base, we can locate it, uh, the, 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 the object, uh, you know, any uh, visual, virtual object, anywhere we like. So just like the, the last one, you see, we try to, to, to put the, 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 the image or the model of the brain into exact location. And with the marker, we can fix it. You know, even you move the hand, the, the brain will go along with, with your scalp. So I think it will be much better in the future that we can fix everything like uh, we scan the, the bone, you have a, some broken bone in your hand, uh, scan it and you know, map it on your hand. So the, the surgeon can you know, operate on exactly the location where, where the, bone, the bone is uh, was broken or something like that. So it just, you know, this, this uh, uh, process will help not uh, directly operate, but it will help uh, in, in, in making operation or treatment efficiency, more and more efficiency. I think that's the, the, the purpose of this one. And, and I think we try to, to work with the medical person to, to make it uh, to be the real uh, the practice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do I 
Could I know that if you would like to apply the AR on the um, medical health care, do you think you need to increase a um, lot of budget on, the, on that? Yes. Uh, in fact, you know, because uh, we try to, because we don't have a <laughs> uh, big budget, so we are trying to operate it, uh, you know, working on the smartphone. But in the future, the, the price for the, like for the smart class is cheaper. So it will be easier for the, the, the medical doctor, you know, just wearing a glass and he can see, you know, getting all the information about the uh, MRI image or whatever, you know, and you can fix this on to the body and you can see. So, so it will be very easy to diagnose. Uh, the the patient and then uh, I think it will okay except the for the device I think the the rest is not not so expensive but uh, if we get a good uh, device you know it will be much easier to 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 get some work work done easier yeah that, that, that's that's all. thank you yeah thank you very much. Yeah, I think um, our time is almost up. So thank you very much again for um, our speaker, Dr. Pong Pong. And I hope that I can see you soon in Thailand. Okay. And also maybe you can come to Taiwan again. So see you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And see you again. Thank you very much, Professor Pong Pong and Dr. Gao. Coming up, we are very honored to have Dr. Kampi Lin to give a talk on the the current status of the wearable devices and AI in medical application and the regulation. Let's welcome uh, Dr. Lai Jianwen, Vice Superintendent of our hospital to introduce uh, Dr. Lin. Good afternoon, everybody. We are very honored to have the Dr. Lin to give this talk. His topic is the current status of wearable devices and AI in medical applications and regulations. Professor Lin is the distinguished professor at the Department of Electrical Engineering, Zhongbian University, as well as the director of the Medical Devices Technology um, Translation Center. He is indeed an expert in uh, this area. He also helped the Taiwan's TFD aid to build uh, the platform on medical devices. Dr. Lin is also the Secretary General of IFMBE and the, the members of IAMBE. He's also the editor-in-chief of JMBE. He has accumulated a lot of experiences in medical devices, R&D management, marketing, etc. His research area is mainly in the processing of healthcare imaging and also processing of the biomedical signals. Artificial intelligence has played an increasingly important role in Taiwan. However, there are concerns about moral issues, the privacy, and also the reliability, transparency. Countries around the world are enacting regulations on the application of AI in different areas. However, uh, our goal is to build uh, an excellent and reliable uh, healthcare uh, environment. 
So, Dr. Lee uh, will talk about the, some of the regulatory matters on the application of the AI and wearable devices. Without further ado, let's welcome uh, Dr. Ding. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my great honor to have this opportunity to give the talk in this conference. Due to the pandemic situation, we unfortunately cannot have a face-to-face -face discussion. I still expect every participant, everyone can enjoy this conference. My topic is provide some thoughts on the current status of medical device regulations for wearable device combined with artificial intelligence technology and the opportunity to apply new technology to implement into wearable device. Understanding the regulation for the management of the entire life cycle of medical devices will help to, com to commercialize research results onto the market. I will follow this direction to share a few experiments on this topic. I will also expand a few time to present the result of biomedical engineering cooperation with medical team <coughs> for medical service needs in Zhanghua Christian Hospital. Since my talk may involve the thoughts of artificial intelligence technology, I would like to share a picture to you. Can you figure out what is it by your observations? What may be the result recognized it by an artificial intelligence technology? Let's check this possible result later. Let's first review the differences of regulation in technical characteristics between the traditional medical device regulations and the artificial intelligence based medical device regulations. Traditional medical devices is an entity, a physical device, and its function after leaving the factory is fixed. It. Both maintenance and updates they must be carried it out according to the accurate condition of entity. As for software as medical devices, there is no entity. It needs to be installed on a carrier to perform the function. The product performance is fixed it after leaving the factory, but it is easy to improve the performance, and it can be carried it out on site, remote, or automatically update according to needs. Artificial intelligence based it software as medical devices with the feature of self-adaptive and the continuous learning. Its function theoretically will perform better with the expansion of data set. Of course, it may also become worse. This is a new challenge for artificial intelligence based medical devices. In Taiwan, TFDA has announced it, the technical guideline for registering of artificial intelligence based medical devices in September 2020. The required information includes software outlines, algorithm description, training method, using environmental and uh, restriction, functional verification and uh, validation report, and so on. At present, the training method maybe is the key issue for recognize the artificial intelligence based medical devices. 
there are four domestic products at 12 and the 12 international products that have passed it, the TFDA certifications. Regarding the current global situation, the United States has also provided a guideline as a reference. The European unit is still in discussion. South Korea and the mainland China have already had regulations which are worth continuing to follow up as our reference. Next, I would like to introduce a case of artificial intelligence based its wearable medical devices. This case is to measure long term blood pressure during sleep. Wearable devices that we commonly have now used it in major physiological signal parameter or vital signs, including clothes, watches, bracelets, rings, glasses, bears, and so on. These wearable devices often use some engineering technology, such as optical sensing, electrical signal sensing, displacement or motion sensing, or temperature sensing technique. They are major physiological signal, including heart rate, photopolysismograph, electrical cardiogram, SpO2 value, blood pressure, EMG, ECG, ERG, or respiratory rate. It is worth mentioning that there is currently a lack of a simple, effective, and easier to use wearable device for long term blood pressure monitoring. The background is that blood pressure changes with the circadian rhythm. Comparison nighttime blood pressure with daytime blood pressure for the normal subject, it will drop by around 20% if the blood pressure dropped by less than 10% or even rise at nighttime, there is a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. Another important issue is that getting up in the morning is the time with highest incidence of stroke or cardiovascular events. With the measurement information of nine time blood pressure variation, it may be used it as an indicator to evaluate the possible occurrence of cardiovascular events such as stroke. The criteria of, of our design of this long-term blood pressure monitor is that we we can measure blood pressure information during sleep for a long time continuously. Therefore, we need to be non-invasive automatic measurement, low interference, easy to operate at home, and easy to wear. This is the special technique designed it with electrical cardiogram and the photopolysismogram measurement. We implement the device as a electrical, electronic device to measure the major parameter of ECG and the PPG to achieve this long-term blood pressure measurement model. This is a verification comparison result of systolic and the diastolic blood pressure obtained by an Omron blood pressure monitor as gold standard, measured it once every minute for 30 minutes. The mean absolute difference is within four millimeter mercury, which meets the base, uh, the blood pressure acceptable requirement less than seven millimeter Mercury, and then we measure different subjects 
that perform acceptable result of the long-term blood pressure values. These are preliminary tests. The most important sign is that this measurement is possible to obtain the information of blood pressure variation and the changes during sleep. For this kind of technology, the future commercialization can be considered to follow as a health service software product and promote it into the consumer market or to follow the traditional medical device requirement as a fixed it function and use it in hospital. It can also follow the guidelines of artificial intelligence based medical devices as a continued optimization medical devices, which is our expectation and uh, still looking for possible clinical application. If so, then based on the proper post-marketing development and uh, the feature of long-term blood pressure measurement by wearable medical devices. I would like to make a simple conclusion here. That is, we must continue to collect clinically meaningful data and avoid to use the bad data and the bad algorithm on the artificial intelligence model. In addition, any artificial intelligence based medical devices to validate the artificial intelligence model must continue to, fo to focus on risk and the efficacy together. We cannot just focus on performance and ignore patient safety and the risk. Now, let's look at this picture again. It may be a duck that can swim with two feet and the two wings, or it may be a rabbit that has four feet and uh, no wings. It can swim or not, we don't know. Therefore, I want to use this opportunity to highlight that the integration of the medical healthcare team and the technical team is extremely valuable to work together to develop a simple, small, small medical devices with wearable, wearable technology and uh, artificial intelligence technologies. Regarding the biomedical supports and the engineering supports for the healthcare qualities, I would like to use the remaining time to briefly report on the results that we have achieved 
in the cooperation by Zhanghua Christian Hospital and the Zhongyuan Christian University, and supported by medical nursing team, physicians, clinical engineers, and the information technology experts. This is an integrated cooperation diagram that integrates the medical system and the clinical and the biomedical engineers. It is focused on the medical needs. Alarm fatigue reduction is one of cases of our cooperation. The main purpose is to apply engineering technology to reduce false alarm and achieve the purpose of precision nursing care. Through approved IRB, it has around 94% of the false alarm reduction can be achieved. We have presented the preliminary performance at the International Conference in Singapore. Academic journal is in draft. Clinical evaluation are continuous undergoing. Another collaboration is to perform endoscopic peptic ulcer breathing imaging examination with an artificial technology. Through approved it, IRB from 2020 to now, it includes a set of artificial model software and the user interface that can provide recommendation, references, and the validations to the physician. Since it is a very popular topic, we have had an oral presentation in an international conference and the published two academic journal paper with impact factor 1.55 and 4.24. In summary, the resource of biomedical engineers, clinical engineers, and the information technology experts, I believe the support in Zhanghua Christian Hospital can provide medical service nursing care service and the high quality healthcare and the medical care for the patients. This system in Zhanghua Christian Hospital must be a very important and valuable system. We are here to witness and expect Zhanghua Christian Hospital to be more successful in the future and contribute more to our community. This is my today's presentation. I would like to congratulate Zhanghua Christian Hospital, a very happy 125th anniversary. Best wish everyone healthy and stay safe. Thank you very much.
Yeah, and we have a critical facility required to incorporate that into uh, the cybersecurity issues. So at the moment, so uh, it's uh, our association, and uh, so uh, they work together with uh, uh, other uh, 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 hospitals to to uh, work on the the issues of the uh, cybersecurity. So with regard to the wearable uh, the, uh, device and the artificial intelligence uh, or the uh, software application and the development, he and uh, so we work together with uh, FDA and then so we learned that there are new uh, regulations. So in the future, I think we should have uh, many, many meetings to uh, to uh, apply this this uh, field. Our hospital also have uh, many co collaboration projects with uh, uh, Professor Ling, ongoing projects. So are there any other questions uh, for uh, Professor Ling? All right. So any uh, final words from Lee, Professor Lee? I would like to remind here is uh, working together with medical system, physician, nurse, and uh, clinical engineering, information technology, which is very, very important because we need a teamwork to create our value to service for the all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Lin, and also Deputy Superintendent Lai. Now, we are very honored to have Mr. Fu Yi Hong, Director of Procurement Logistics, Department of Healthcare System from our hospital to give a talk. And we are very honored to have Ms. Li Jian Chen, former Director of Procurement Center of our hospital to introduce the speaker. All the attendees online, good afternoon. I'm the moderator for this session. My name is Chen Li Zhen. It is my honor to introduce the speaker, Director Hong. I have worked with Kim for more than 10 years. He's now the Director of Procurement and Logistics. He is also the Director of Administration Office of our hospital. He has more than 10 years experiences in procurement and logistics management. He also created and developed the very first logistics center built by hospitals in Taiwan. It also uh, helped to build an e-commerce platform, smart mobile warehousing logistic big data the system, and even uh, a fleet have been formed for the monitoring of the, the operation process. He has also. Um, achieve a lot in the procurement of the medical institutions from the front end to the back end. The quality that can be maintained. He makes sure that we are using the right healthcare resources At this session, Director Hong will talk about healthcare supply chain technologies and patient safety. 
this is a very important uh, issue you know, in the area of the patient safety. So without further ado, there's a welcome director home. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to uh, join you at the 125th anniversary of the Christian Hospital event. This is the topic of my presentation, healthcare supply chain technologies and patient safety. I hope that this is just a starting point that will uh, lead us to further discussion on uh, this topic. I will also talk about the development of the supply chain and also uh, some of the key issues we need to pay attention to on patient safety. This is the outline of my presentation. Supply chain, especially global supply chain and the technological development. Secondly, I will um, talk about healthcare the supply chain, any risk the supply chain will affect the patient safety. Thirdly, there have been some development and application of the medical management. I will go to the details later. Fourthly, from the management of the resources, are there any development we anticipate? I will give uh, my conclusion. Hopefully we can have further discussion after my talk. Of course, um, let's review though what has happened last year and that this year from these pictures. I think you uh, know that people um, need a mask to protect themselves from COVID-19. So um, the supply of the mask is a very important issue. Many uh, mask manufacturers are located in China. We call that the red supply chain. Around 80 to 90 percent of the face masks were made in China. When there's a shortage on, on supply, then people uh, were really worried the last year. And the second issue is in early uh, March, the container that ship ever given was stranded in Suez Canal. It was um, difficult for um, the people around the world to see uh, such a scale of chaos, chaos due to such an incident. Of course, um, that incident um, disrupted the supply chain of the world. That means the supply chain, especially the global supply chain, sometimes is very fragile and delicate. The third supply chain issue is on chips, silicon chips. After the coronavirus outbreak, we um, forecast that the demand will be lower so uh, we uh, reduce our uh, order placement. Now you see uh, the manufacturers also cut down uh, their production capacity. The result is the shortage of um, chips. So many countries worry about um, whether or not the demand will be met in the near future. 
Indeed, there's a shortage of chips right now. The fourth issue, through the analysis, we found that the loss from the counter the drug is around 200 billion US dollars. This is just economic losses. If you um, count uh, the uh, damage uh, on the patient side, on our health, the number is even bigger. One of the example is the COVID-19 vaccine. Since there's a, a shortage right now, and we also see the counterfeit uh, vaccine, fake vaccine in the market. Even some countries uh, were uh, deceived to sign the contract uh, to buy the substandard vaccines. This happened because of the problems in the supply chain. Let's go back to look at the supply chain management. Supply chain management is to pursue the efficiency of the upstream and the downstream collaboration to reduce cost and also that to the leverage competitive advantages. Supply chain always focus on efficiency. What um, people need is to receive the, the products now or just in time. A lot of the, the sales uh, on the internet uh, through e-commerce need to provide timely delivery. That's a key point in the supply chain management. There are two major goals of the supply chain management. Number one, global optimization. I talked about efficiency earlier. And here, this is global optimization, including cost, shipping, and also inventory, and also marketing. The second goal is managing uncertainty. So from sales going back, to the shipping, raw material, there are so many uncertainties in the supply chain. So one of the goals of the good uh, supply chain management is to manage such uncertainties. Next, I will talk about the evolution of supply chain. From the very beginning, you see the development of supply chain. The purpose um, is to reduce cost. So the priority consideration is production resources. So company will go to the location where the raw materials are cheapest. The second consideration is demographic dividends. For example, workshop of the world, China, many countries go there to set up their production site because of low cost labor. And thirdly, there's uh, the standard module to increase efficiency. So, mm, Cost is always an issue. Even now, cost reduction remain one of the major issues for a supply chain management. The second component is supply chain that safety or security. The supply chain um, disruption I just told about regarding mask or the chips are probably attributed by the trade war and technology war. Even some uh, geopolitical tension comes into play in the supply chain disruption. 
supply chain also need to have some flexibility to provide customized services using big data analysis so that um, we can be better prepared to deal with uncertainties. Supply chain is evolving. The whole world is also evolving. Let me uh, talk about uh, some of the um, advancement uh, in technology, for example, big data, uh, AI, IoT, blockchain, automation, self-driving vehicle, and also dialogue system, immersive experience, immersive technology. I will talk about these in detail and then their relations to the supply chain issue. There are some differences um, we need to talk about in terms of the supply chain of the medical resources and the products. The benefit of supply chain management is to reduce costs and increase efficiency, especially when we uh, talk about medical safety uh, consideration for medical materials and uh, products. On the right hand side, for the medical uh, materials, products, and devices, safety always comes first. In the entirety of the life cycle of the medical products, safety is always the, the priority issue. Many factors always pursue just in time a delivery and the zero the inventory or the hunger uh, marketing is another way to manage inventory. But for healthcare industry, the products may affect patient safety. The products may be the matter of life and death. So that we uh, need to uh, know such a difference for uh, medical products and devices and the medical supply chain. And also you can see the tracing or uh, tracking or uh, even recycling of the um, medical uh, products. So the management of such a supply chain is different uh, from general supply chain from such a perspective. This is the medical materials and the patient safety. For the medical the products, they are national and international regulations or standards to comply with, including certification. Secondly, we also need to combat the counterfeiting or unlawful transfer of the medical resources. And thirdly, appropriate level of inventory and the efficient logistic the supply management so that um, when people need it, we can provide it. Fourthly, we also need to reduce medical identification and uh, operational uh, errors. I'm talking about um, all the stakeholders, healthcare, personnel, logistics, um, delivery personnel, warehouse processing personnel, since the product affects patient safety, we need to have a stringent process to monitor the entire process. Number six, 
We also need to monitor products on the market, traceability and uh, recall products when adverse events are found or happened. All these issues are related to the patient safety. This is the supply chain of the medical material from the raw material to manufacturers, to distributors, to hospitals and the patient. This is the simple supply chain of medical resources. So it include all the, the uh, uh, stocks and the transportations. So today we are trying to uh, to, to present the the, the risks uh, among the supply chain of uh, medicines and and uh, uh, medical device. Uh, whether uh, our supply chain technology can solve those issues with regard to the raw materials. Nowadays, many people uh, uh, focus on the uh, the products alone, but how they often ignore the fact that whether raw material can be uh, identified to make sure it has not been polluted, uh, counterfeited, or been uh, uh, with a, a poor quality. So even the, the raw, raw materials value can, can have a, a, a several times of gap. However, a products you want to highlight the, the efficacy. However, the raw material have a, maybe several times of a, a value gap there. All right, so next, uh, the, in the factory, the, regarding the pro, pro, pro production line, in the manufacturing, whether the production lines has been contaminated or something wrong with the quality control, these are the area we need to pay attention and the concern. Then, then goes to regarding the agent uh, distributors or, de or dealers and distrib and uh, whether they have a, a, a transfer or use a law for uh, the uh, application of uh, the. Uh, 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 sales uh, deliver uh, different uh, products. So then goes to hospital, we can just follow the uh, correct uh, application uh, or whether we can differentiate uh, the, the, the right uh, material to the patients without any error. Then in the end goes to patient, whether there's uh, any uh, adverse e event or maybe we need to follow up certain patients who use which batch so those are issues that we need to uh, face and regarding the possible risks on the uh, the healthcare supply chain. So now today I just printed it out for you. And then after you list those risks, I think the first thing you want to do is uh, you, you know that, that to identify those uh, issues, uh, first of all, you need to have the right information, right? So for the right information, it's just not what you say or I say. It, it is rather that it goes through a blockchain and, and then those uh, information has been protected and uh, regarding privacy and uh, not tempered. So every uh, threshold that you upload the right uh, and uh, authentic information to the blockchain. And then so those uh, correct information can be shared, can be traced. And so for those uh, uh, right information can be uploaded to the big data for further analysis and uh, have some uh, effective contribution. So as a result, so in the past uh, few years, uh, according to my ex uh, experience, this is a supply chain uh, system in uh, CCH uh, to, uh, to summarize there are such a, a supply chain technology uh, advancement. So we have laid out a, a roadmap for the future development. From the perspective of supply chain, we have uh, made uh, uh, use a blockchain to protect the authentic, uh, authenticity and the correction of the data. Then we will know the status of raw materials and uh, the production line uh, from pharmaceutical uh, 
com uh, company, the, the distributor, the agents, as well as the, the hospitals uh, cycle, uh, and then all the way to cut patients' feedback. These are all very critical data in uh, our big data analysis, including our uh, logistics center. And uh, we can use AI to conduct most uh, feasible appropriate uh, adjustment and control, including the the uh, the vehicle at, at dispatch and uh, for including uh, autonomous uh, vehicle, including uh, the, the robotic arms, et cetera, et cetera. All those that uh, require uh, advanced technology. The ultimate goal is to utilize uh, these uh, technology and uh, development and uh, supply chain development to uh, provide a comprehensive uh, coverage of uh, all four uh, flow direction information, the information, uh, material, logistic, uh, cash, and uh, also the, uh, the uh, consumptions. So with uh, comprehensive coverage, then we can make sure that the safety of the supply chain and make sure the patient safety as well. So let's take a look of the that uh, nowadays how we do the healthcare supply chain uh, safety. So start from blockchain as an example. Nowadays, uh, blockchain has been applied to every sector in healthcare, I think. Uh, so the electronic platform is a very mature uh, uh, issue status. So we use all the information for the blockchain to upload to the this uh, uh, digital platform to uh, search for the barcode of the product, and then the the, the certification, uh, all the information relevant to the certification, including raw material certification, including the factory batch as well as. Uh, uh, hygiene, occupation, safety uh, certification, and the uh, import batch uh, and code number, all of that will be stored in a blockchain with uh, the most uh, accurate and most comprehensive information. Once you have those data, then, and then, then uh, it, within big data and AI, we can predict a global uh, supply uh, capacity and also regional supply capacity as well as the stock in the hospital. And then so the, regarding the, 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 the at immediate healthcare capacity, with that we have developed a so-called smart uh, the inventory and the information uh, modules. So to benefit or contribute to the, uh, the medical uh, healthcare supply chain uh, with a uh, uh, safe inventory and uh, uh, reduce inventory. With this uh, digital application and AI uh, application, we can link to IoT and autonomous uh, vehicles, including automatic uh, material reducing and, and uh, screening, uh, and also auto autonomous uh, delivery, autonomous uh, uh, purchase order management, as well as uh, uh, the uh, uh, the transportation fleet management. I think these are all uh, involved in the supply chain. I think if in the future, our uh, next step, our autonomous uh, uh, facility can be further advanced. We can save energy, save labor, save costs, and enhance uh, security. Okay, the last part I want to uh, cover is uh, nowadays we are uh, under a research and development stage. So when all the AI as well as uh, uh, the automatic uh, automation has been uh, uh, involved, uh, engaged, I think the manager would like to con conduct dialogue with the system and to have a so-called immersive uh, uh, experience to see the products, the commodity, the flow, the information development, as well as other uh, 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 processes. So immersive experience and dialogue system is very important in this technology. It is, uh, uh, it's been con continuously uh, expanded and developed. Last but not least, uh, let's take a look at this. This is uh, by the end of the, uh, the channel, the medicine and the medical devices. Regarding to the uh, medicine and the medical device, what is the ultimate goal of application? First of all, so when you have a fragmented uh, information, you can link together through uh, what I said, uh, such as uh, big data, AI, and blockchain. You can 
link all the information together. So nowadays for all the, the products, not only just uh, being aware of the, the uh, uh, being uh, only the, uh, the inventory uh, uh, staff or the procurement officers know where this uh, material came from. As long as you want to know, you can just uh, 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 to, to scan uh, the products on, on your hand. Every healthcare staff can uh, uh, retrieve the comprehensive information. So, so for the user and the patient, it is uh, very uh, uh, enhanced. Uh, it has enhanced the safety. Secondly, for the medical materials can be identified in real time in clinic, including simplifying clinical manual work and uh, to reduce the labor uh, burden. So what the supply chain can do is to reduce the uh, uh, the uh, differentiation uh, error and the, or in, include uh, enhance the, the identification efficiency. The thirdly, for those uh, uh, information can be documented. And uh, so for the afterward, if there are any issues, uh, they can all be uh, uh, Feedback and uh, to and the uh, necessary action taken. Uh, if, for example, if certain uh, the, the drugs have some low efficacy or have some uh, adverse event uh, or serious adverse events need to be retrieved and or pulled back. So such technology can help us to uh, have a real time uh, retrieve or uh, or monitor the products on the, on the market to see are there any issues. All right, so the last slide of my presentation is this one. Let me uh, summarize regarding the global supply chains. Uh, uh, after uh, this uh, a few years, we have uh, draw more attention. And uh, for the supply chain management, uh, so quite a lot of benefits can be can link to the technology development. So such uh, technology development can bring uh, uh, better management for the supply chain. And within the supply chain, our medicine and uh, medical device supply chain is is uh, relevant to the uh, the uh, patient safety of the patient. For example, the the product with poor quality or are counterfeit. The, uh, products. If you uh, make sure it will not enter the, uh, the supply chain, then it will uh, provide a very high patient safety. So we expect that we can use a supply chain technology in the future to uh, focus on the patient safety, including uh, we always emphasize that uh, now the safety of the raw material is uh, sometimes, uh, uh, oftentimes people ignored and uh, with regard to the quality management and uh, also transportation, including the the storage uh, the safety and the safety uh, inventory, safety stock, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, and our own uh, focus converge to the 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 safety and uh, of patients. So the right the diagram on the right side is uh, the objective that for every stakeholders and the, and the agencies to to uh, compile this uh, uh, roadmap to including information flow, uh, material flow, uh, monetary flow, and uh, to increase uh, uh, the safety of the patient. This complete my brief presentation. I hope that it can be of beneficial to all of you, and uh, so we can uh, discuss this together. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Director Hong, regarding the uh, healthcare supply chain technologies and uh, the challenges. So, starting from uh, the his uh, presentation script, you can see. Now the supply chain has transformed from linear to the global supply chain, from the raw material supply uh, for uh, production to the downstream transportation, even to the healthcare usage. Uh, every layer have uh, their respective challenges. So uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Director Chen Hong told us uh, how to uh, link with uh, the healthcare technologies. So on the line there, there is a, a guest of honor who would like to raise a question to you. So uh, Director Hong, in your experience uh, uh, with regard to the 
what are the common uh, issues regarding the 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 uh the adversary adversary uh, event or the quality issue thank you thank you uh, director chen uh, for your question actually with regard to the uh defected product where you can uh, separate into two parts the first uh, type is is uh, uh, the the counterfeit or uh, poor quality the other type is so the abnormal on the production lines. So this is uh, uh, the, perhaps a, of some issues when, it, when the finished product has, has, uh, cannot pass the quality assurance. So with regard to the healthcare management, we will document all those issues and review it. If it is uh, relevant to the design or the quality, the quality of the product, we will replace it. And also the uh, trace uh, the responsibilities, which and then uh, study, uh, the, the investigate the issues. If it is on the line, I mean, it is uh, 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 normal products and uh, there are uh, production line, there are a few uh, uh, the uh, default uh, products uh, or defective products. We will discuss with the vendor if it is a transportation issue or a production issue, or perhaps it is uh, the regard to the the uh, uh, storage environment. So these are the areas we will uh, feedback to the vendor, so the vendors can uh, have the room to um, uh, to improve. So uh, ultimate goal is for the safety of the patient. Thank you, Director Hong. Actually, for every medical uh, agency, so when they uh, handle the uh, the abnormal uh, medical devices, I think they have uh, the the uh, center of operation to uh, to make sure all our staffs that can use a uh, 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 stable quality, uh, and uh, also the technical uh, maneuver can. Uh, cover the, the safety issues. The other one I uh, would like to personally ask the director Hong, with regard to the impact of COVID-19, I'm wondering, director Hong, so uh, during the pandemic, uh, uh, I would say from the hospitals uh, perspective, have you re uh, received or encountered any challenge? Uh, so could you briefly just share your experience? All right, for this question and uh, with regard to the whole uh, supply chain. So when we talk about just in time, uh, a few years uh, ago, they just uh, give up so-called the, the zero inventory, especially on the healthcare industry, it is possible to reach a zero inventory. For example, this time when we encounter COVID-19 issues, uh, you can see if uh, we all rely on uh, just in time supply, then you will have a very significant issues. It is just like what I mentioned in my report, four types of uh, products, and, uh, just because the people want to reduce the inventory, in, in, you know, reduce the cost, then you have some issues. This is why in the beginning, why CCH, the whole system has a, a, a logistic center. One thing you emphasize that, so for those uh, medicine and uh, medical device have a safety concern. Second, there is inventory uh, uh, security to face, uh, to in encounter this uh, uh, pandemic. So you can see that Shanghua Christian Hospital have a very good uh, anti-COVID-19 uh, the measurements uh, through this uh, pandemic. Uh, I think uh, CCH's performance is so well recognized and well received with regard to the allocation of the the resources and also the the contingent plan. This uh, this uh, the best uh, uh, resource and the performance. So this, so everybody is looking for the uh, the management of supply chain. You need to uh, concern one thing very important is that in the end. So the uh, healthcare measurements and as well as supply chain concern is patient safety. Thank you very much, uh, Director Hong. So this complete uh, the, our section. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Director Hong and Director Chen. The last session of today, 
we are very honored to have Dr. Bo Chun Wang from Joint Commission of Taiwan. He will talk about prevention of the harm caused to your patient by information technology related medical errors. The moderator for this session is um, Su Deputy Superintendent uh, Chen Chongling. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Next, we are going to talk about how we can uh, enhance a patient safety. Smart healthcare provide direct benefits, including prevention of errors and also reduction of the work burden. ECRI Institute in the United States proposed 10 hazards caused by healthcare technology in 2021, and three are related to ICT technology. Taiwan and Joint Commission um, launched a uh, platform um, to provide a learning opportunity uh, to enhance uh, the uh, safety of the application of healthcare uh, technology. We are very honored to have Dr. Wang uh, from Taiwan Joint Commission uh, to give this talk. Dr. Wang is the CEO of the Taiwan Joint Commission. He's also the professor of the medical school of the Fujian University. He also studied in the EMBA program of National Taiwan University and also the Public Health Institute of Harvard University. Um, Dr. Wang um, serves as directors in many uh, healthcare related association. His um, research area, including uh, healthcare quality and uh, patient safety, as well as a uh, clinical uh, practice studies, he has published more than 300 papers uh, in domestic and also international publications. Without further ado, there's a welcome, uh, Dr. Wang. Ha Chin Wang from Joint Commission Taiwan. It is my pleasure and honor to present to you in this event to talk about the prevention of harm caused to patients by information technology related medical error. As we know that smart hospital is an emerging concept in today's healthcare industry. Many hospitals and uh, healthcare have adopted a variety of solutions involving the IT technology. As you can see, the market is rapidly growing over the years. The use of electronic health records, computerized provider order entry system, electronic prescribing system, PACS, laboratory information system, clinical information system, and uh, also the tailored healthcare, all have promising future. The market size value in 2021 can be estimated to be 81.4 billion, and the revenue forecast for 2028 can be 166 billion US dollar. And the growth rate is estimated to be over 10% from 2021 to 2028. But is all this so optimistic? Are there any risks inherited with the development of the smart hospital solution? So we worry about the system errors that can lead to the harm for patients. What if the health information system cannot support the process? What if the workflows and the pro procedures are not adjusted to the capability of the health information systems? If this happens, they may cause the missed information or the inability to find needed information. 
It can cause the mistaken application of default values. It can cause the input errors and uh, also the ergonomical errors. For 2021, the ECRI has announced the top 10 health technology hazards. In this hazards, there are some topics that are related to the smart healthcare use. For example, the telehealth adoption, the software vulnerability, and the use of the AI in the diagnostic imaging. So all these are inherited risk that come up with the convenience of the health information technology. So it is our responsibility to understand the content of the IT error. The problem is in the increasing pace um, in our healthcare system. From Taiwan's patient reporting system, TPR, from 2016 to 2017, we identified some medical errors that are related to health information technology. The big parts are the missed doses, the not appropriate drug use, and the wrong dosage. When pharmacists dispensing the medicine, they may have some timing problem, there are some dosing problem and some dil dilution problem. As we know that during the patient safety operations, medication errors rank as the highest problems of all patient safety issues. And today we know that it is closely related to the IT. Since 2019, during Commission Taiwan work with ECRI and the 11 hospitals, we we'll try to uh, identify the cases from hospital to find out the problems uh, with the IT and discuss the solution. We have the group to study and the brainstorming. So what we find, we found that most of the HIT system involved in the reported events, including the CPOE, computerized provider order entry, and the clinical documentation system, and also the decision support system. Some of them are involved with the administrative system. And uh, the health IT event type, most often are the health IT systems, then human machine interface, then medical device connectivity, are involved. Most of the cases do no harm to patients, but we do have some 25 near misses and some others. We do have some 18 cases with harms to patients cause one death, one major event, and some minor and moderate events. So what about the types of the health information technology problem. We can have some information system problem. We can have data transmission problem. We have data synchronization problem among related problems and uh, the user interface problem, device connectivity problems, and also the human operation problems. The contributing factors, usability, confusing information display, excessive demand, information hard to find. We have data quality problem, the discrepancy between the database and the displayed, the printed or exported data, lost data, design problem, missing recommendation or excessive non-specific recommendation in appropriate level of automation. And although the implementation problem involving the faculty software design, the configuration of programming problem and other additional information problems. And also the people suffer from inadequate training, hardware failure and excessive workload. 
So we use a, a societal technical model to analyze the problems. We can see the hardware, software, content, interface, people, workflow, uh, policy, and the regulation or system measurement problem. So there are many, many possibilities that can cause uh, arrows then to harm the patient safety. So the conclusion, information systems are closely related to patient safety. It is an important emerging issue that should be taken care of seriously. Most IT-related medical errors caused by many reasons, not by single cause. Information system must cater to the need of users, right person, right information in the right time. Avoid providing too much unnecessary information or warning message. This is my talk. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Wang. Uh, Deputy Superintendent uh, is busy, so I will chair this QA session. Any questions from the online attendees? Uh, yeah, we can speak uh, Mandarin Chinese, no problem. We do have simultaneous interpretation. Any questions from the attendees? If there's no questions, I have a question for Dr. Wang. In designing information system, we see more and more functions. How can we minimize unnecessary um, checks of the functions? Then uh, this is the question for clinicians. So any advice from you? Can you hear my voice? Yes, we can hear you. Let me talk about ITP as a project. At the Taiwan Joint Commission, we launched this project. And the Zhonghua Christian Hospital also uh, take part in uh, this project. Uh, the uh, CTO uh, or CIO uh, plays very important role in this project. I talked about uh, the redundancy issue. This issue is also very important in the future. Um, we seem to see a lot of unnecessary alerts or warning when uh, we strike a balance uh, between the convenience of the computer system and also some of the fault proof that mechanism um, in the accreditation process. And uh, we do have the one question, for example, this is uh, the blood drawing, we see some abnormal data, then um, the physician will be alerted uh, to call patient back to the hospital or unexpected uh, detection of the cancer uh, lesion um, in the lung from the uh, chest uh, scan. Then the physician need to ask the patient to come back to double check that we have been doing that for more than 10 years. In actual practice, we encounter that the issue we just talked about. The system itself uh, is not uh, complicated you just need to alert the physician and you will need to notify the, the patient. For the, the uh, blood sugar level, how high is too high? Is it 200 or 300? And uh, for the metabolism uh, department, uh, they uh, probably need to set a threshold. So uh, what kind of threshold is appropriate required a discussion? Uh, that's the threshold for us to send alerts. That goes back to what I just told about. Um, we need to strike a balance between the convenience and also unnecessary information burden on the users. 
it boils down to that the ultimate purposes. If you um, keep sending alerts, that's very annoying. And sometimes it is a counterproductive. And some senior uh, staff uh, came to me, uh, say that, well, could you um, modify your system? Um, I don't want to receive alert now, three or four o'clock in the morning. So the design of the information system for healthcare setting is very important. We need to minimize redundancy. It's it just like the equipment used in uh, the units. If you receive too many false alarm, then you just switch off the, the, uh, the equipment. Then you will not receive any alerts or alarms. The same goes for the design of an IT system uh, in healthcare setting. That's a very important issue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Wang, for your sharing. Yeah, you need to customize the system to fit the needs of users. Any questions from the online participants? If there's no question, thank you very much, Dr. Wang, for your sharing. And thank you, Deputy Superintendent Lin, for moderating this session. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, International Online Conference on Smart Healthcare Technology and the Patient Safety is going to a close. We're going to have the Deputy Superintendent Lin to make the closing remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, greetings. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, participating in this uh, uh, international online conference on smart healthcare and uh, patient safety, as well as uh, Changhua, uh, Hong Kong, the Christian Hospital's uh, 125 anniversary uh, celebrations. So this is uh, very important to uh, convey the new consideration of the patient safety orientation. So this meeting, uh, I would like to express uh, the uh, superintendent, uh, Mu Hua Chen. So starting from the patient uh, oriented as well as the Zhang Liao Ming Yi support. And also in the meantime, I also would like to uh, uh, the appreciate that especially the uh, the nursing uh, the, the department as well as the uh, the overseas medical mission center. So we sadly found the uh, patient uh, safety oriented as well as we work together with the Taiwan Patient Safety Club, cultural clubs. Uh, CCH will have maintained our commitment to patient safety. May God bless you. Thank you very much for your participation. Ladies and gentlemen, this complete uh, the international online conference on smart healthcare and the patient safety. Thank you very much for your participation. Let's work together for the safety of the patient. Let's work together. See you later.